Hey, welcome back to Little Hollow Homestead. Today, as you can see, we're indoors. Um, I prefer to work outdoors, but it's cold and it's snowy. And I've just about got all my outdoor projects done that I could do um, during the winter, um, minus just doing regular chores and stuff. So when we built this home years ago, well, not years, probably four or five years ago, I guess now it's been. Um, when we built this home, we decided not to uh, have the basement finished. A couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one, I don't want to pay for a finished basement in my mortgage for 30 years, and I'd rather pay for it as we can afford it, and as we go along, I can I can start framing it, which is what I'm going to start today, and then we can do electrical, sheetrock, and, and all the stuff as we can afford it, rather than pay for it every month um, for 30 years. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the other reason is there's just the two of us now, uh, just me and my wife that are at home, um, our two sons and uh, their wives and our grandkids live close by, but obviously we don't need the space day in, day out. So every once in a while, this space will be nice to use um, for family gatherings, things like that. Even though we don't have a large family, there's only eight of us total. But um, I'll take you on a little tour. Um, my youngest son and daughter-in-law, they sold their home across town and needed a place to live while they uh, were in the building process just down the road from us. So... Um, probably two and a half, three years ago, we finished just a bathroom and a bedroom just so they had a place to, to kind of be on their own and away from mom and dad upstairs. And uh, as they went through that process, as you know, with COVID and everything, slowed everything down. It took them almost two years to get their house built. They were definitely not planning on that, but that's the reality of, of what they had uh, to do to get their new home. So anyway, uh, it was a good place for them to, to hunker down for a couple of years and do their thing. And uh, really help them save money, um, which is a good plus for them. Uh, get their feet under them a little more solidly and uh, wait for their home to be built. They're in their home now. And so I'll show you what we did for them here in a second. Um, but right now, I just got the wood downstairs and we're just going to start framing up the walls. I'm just going to do a little bit as I, uh, as I have time for and money for and uh, just kind of start the process here. So Come along and enjoy the journey with me. It's framing out my basement. I'll show you how I do it. And uh, we'll take you on a tour first of the two rooms that I did finish for them. And then I'll just kind of go through you, uh, through the thought process of how I go about framing. So this is a little uh, abnormal video for Little Hollow Homestead. I'm not dealing with animals. Um, I'm not dealing with garden plants, um, outdoor maintenance, chores like that. But this is part of life and this is what I do. So I thought I'd bring you along. So stick around and we'll have some fun getting framing here. Okay, like I said, um, we framed out and finished this bathroom. We had to do this pretty quick. They were under a pretty big time crunch. So unfortunately, this ceiling's really low. It's right over right over the ductwork in the basement. Um, in hindsight, I think a good investment would have been to invest in nine foot ceilings in the basement. But at the time, you know, that was another $5,000 upgrade and we just flat out couldn't afford it. So anyway, if you got the money, I would suggest when you build a home to go with the nine foot ceilings. So this was kind of a closet slash office for my daughter-in-law while they were living here. But the bedroom, it finished out pretty, ni pretty nice. Um, one thing we thought about is this load bearing wall right here. When I framed the bedroom, I framed that wall straight across, just out of convenience. Um, so I've gone back and forth, whether or not to, to remove this entire wall and then divide off that, that closet slash office that we built and create two bedrooms down here, the one bedroom, and then have another one here with the entry right here somewhere. Um, I have decided I don't want to go to that much work tearing out sheetrock and rerouting electrical. So we're just going to make this into a, a storage room. I don't think you can have enough storage. So that's the plan. So right now we're going to get busy and we're going to start to frame this wall. The way I do it is I measure out from the wall. So there's my original wall that I built. And then I just come along and I mark my 
marks along the floor, staying consistent all the way down to the end. Then to find where my wall ends, I did the same thing. I measured out from the concrete underneath that insulation right here. And what I'll do is I'll just take my level slash straight edge and line it right up here on my marks. And then I can extend the footprint of this wall out here so I know where this wall will end. So I'll do that. Okay, so when I lay out a wall, I've got my, my top sill, bottom sill. And when I cut these, obviously they're, they're eight foot lengths, but I'll take, and I try to avoid having two joints line up. So I'll just reverse my cuts and cut the far end of the pressure treated and then catch or cut this end of the regular wood so that my joints don't overlap. So you got a solid top seal, top plate, and your joint is in the bottom plate right there. So that stays consistent all the way down. Now, some people do this on 16 inches on center. I do it two feet on center. I do that. Mark the X where your stud will go. Ultimately, this is just going to hold sheetrock up. It has no uh, structural integrity. doesn't add anything to the house because you're just attaching it right there where those floor joists are sitting on top of the foundation anyway. So all this is is a place to hang drywall. So it saves money, saves lumber, and I'm all about that. So we'll get this wall laid out, get the studs cut, and I'll show you how I put it together. Okay, to get the length of the studs that you need, you're going to take and measure from your floor to your first floor joist. And then you want to measure every one of them because uh, love concrete contractors, but sometimes they're not the best at keeping things level. So I just like to go like every other one and just kind of get a feel for it. Uh, there's a prime example right there. Right here, this floor joist is about a quarter inch um, shorter than the first three I measured right there. And this one's consistent with that one. And now we're starting to get a little taller here. And now we're back up to where I started. So we'll just kind of get an average of the heights here. We'll cut our studs, nail it together, and we'll we'll put the uh, the wall stand it up and use my level, like I said, to keep it plumb as we nail it, work our way down. So that's the next step. We've got our uh, our top sill, our top plate, bottom plate marked out. Now I just need to count up the number of studs I need. And uh, I think the lowest point I found was um, 92 and three quarters. So I'm not gonna get too exact here, but I will cut, I will start on this end because this seems to be the shorter end. I'm gonna go 93 and three quarters and then work my way up to 93 by the time I get out to here. So it's, it's not gonna be exact, but it'll fit. And then if I need to, I can shim these before I nail them into the floor joists. So that's the plan. One thing I failed to mention, you've got your measurement for your studs there, but you wanna measure this. It's right at three. It's actually a little, little more than three inches. So you wanna deduct I go, um, I deduct three and an eighth inches off the height of my um, studs that I'm cutting. That will make up the difference for the top and bottom plates.
Last one, for this wall anyway. Okay, now start laying it out. Okay, here we go, we're gonna roll this wall up into place. We don't step on those bad boys. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can count it that way a little bit. So my existing wall here, I just checked it. It's plumb. So we know that it's plumb. So this first stud. We are just going to match up with the existing stud, and that should, in a perfect world, be calm. So who knows what's going to happen in my world. Okay, so we know that. Now plumb. That's not going anywhere. Okay. Next step. We're going to get that fancy little laser thingy going here. And we'll line up the bottom of the wall. Drill into the concrete with a quarter inch uh, masonry bit. And then you take three galvanized nails, pound them in the concrete simple way to attach a bottom plate to concrete so that's the next step we'll get going here okay now i've got it anchored to the concrete on the bottom it is time to plumb it up we'll get it plumb and then we'll uh drive some nails up through those floor joists okay you can see we've got the first Five or six studs. They're plumb. So we'll go ahead and attach those and then work our way down the wall. Okay, we got the next four or five. All right, got a few more, and this wall will be framed. All right, there you go, we got a wall framed. Looks pretty darn straight to me. That's good enough for who it's for. Okay, when you get to framing these kind of walls that run perpendicular, or parallel rather, to the floor joists, you have to have these little cleats. 
and these cleats will accept the wall as it goes across this spread here uh, to secure the top of your wall. It also provides an anchor point for sheetrock. So we've got to put those in before we can frame this wall. What I try to use for blocking is warped stuff like this one. You can see how badly that's warped. It's not going to make much difference just using it for uh, for cleats up at the top there. So this is what okay, we Okay, so we got that next wall in. Got it all blocked in. You can see those cleats going across the top, except the top of the wall. It'll also be an anchor point for sheetrock. Our next little challenge is these heating ducts. That's the, the fresh air supply to my furnace. And this is a duct. And then I've got a duct over there. I've got a frame out around. And we'll make a little uh, fake beam. It'll look like a hardwood beam, but it'll, it'll just encase those ducts. So next thing you get this against this window, my wife wants to make a little reading nook with bookshelves and a little day bed or something there. Then going across this wall, we're going to frame in a gas fireplace. Um, should be fairly easy. We've got a gas line. Our gas line is right there. So probably right here somewhere we'll uh, end up with the gas fireplace. And there you go. I think I'm well on my way. And muster the energy to get that wall done today.